Hey guys, so it's uh, Brittany with Southern E Boutique. How's everybody today? Um, I thought I would do a video and it's going to be everything that I have to get through this video because I'm at home and I never, ever, ever, ever film at home because my kids are crazy and my house is a mess and let's just be honest. So the only thing hopefully that you're going to see in this video is the top of my table and um, the window behind me. Um, I look awful, but we are in the middle of a pandemic. So, I mean, I can't get my eyebrows waxed. I can't get my hair cut um, or all the things. Um, and my kids, like I said, I can't get my so I am not a professional seamstress by any means of the word. You're going to hear my kids playing right outside the window. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, but I am not a professional seamstress. I am, I've been sort of taught how to use this machine by my grandmother, but it's been probably like 15 years since I had a lesson. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, maybe not quite that long. Again. <laughs> um, well, probably close to 15. Yeah. I think me and my husband were just weren't married yet. Uh, anyway, so, <laughs> tangent. um, if you see me doing something that's wrong or not correct, feel free to correct me, but just know a disclaimer, I am not a professional. This is me self-taught, doing the best I can. Um, sorry about the background noise. Um, it's a beautiful day. I had to open up the windows. Um, so, like I said, doing the best I can. It's not perfect. Um, the main thing about these masks that they need is they need them well constructed. Uh, I don't think they really care about prints or patterns or if prints and patterns even coordinate. Um, I, I am kind of coordinating my patterns because I can. Um, but if you have two totally different matching fabrics and you need both fabrics, make your mask. It's more important that we get these people uh, the masks that they need um, versus making them pretty. Um, and again, like I said, I'm not professional. Some of my stuff gets messed up. I mean, I just made that seam and like that, I don't, you know, I don't think normal professional people have crooked looking like gathers like that, but I'm doing the best I can and it's well sewn and it's not going to fall apart. <laughs> so that's the most important thing. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I am not a fast sewer. Um, I am also um, a mom of three small children who run around like crazy and need to be fed every apparently 10 minutes while we are not in school or not in session. Um, and usually I work full time on a store, but I can't um, be there right now. So I've dedicated my time to sewing masks to the best of my ability. Um, I just want to shout out everybody that's helping make these masks. Um, everybody who um, has requested this video just because they bought, went out and bought a sewing machine and they don't even know where to start. And some people have asked me where to start. So I just thought, well, I'll make a video and, and show you where I started. Um, I've kind of, uh, I followed a pattern for sizing and this and that, um, but I did make my own pattern as far as the pocket. Um, because, and I don't think everybody's requiring the pocket. Um, I, so you could leave that part off. Um, I do know that they, they were saying like uh, the health department and hospitals and stuff were really wanting that pocket to put a disposable filter in um, that they could take out, wash their mask, um, and have that extra barrier with the disposable pocket. So, yeah. Okay, so to start off, you're going to need a couple of layers of fiber. We are making four layer thick masks uh, with a pocket. So you're going to need um, two pieces that are, um, these are nine and a quarter by six and a quarter. Um, and that's just for um, a seam allowance. A nine by six is kind of your goal, but um, I made mine just a little bit bigger for a bigger seam allowance. Um, and then you're going to need um, a six and a quarter by 10, uh, but you're gonna cut this in half. Um, and then I have um, folded over and ironed down and then I'm gonna stitch along there. And this is going to be your um, pocket for a disposable filter. And then I have a piece of cotton batting, um, and that is um, five by seven. Um, this is going to be through the main part of the mask, but I did it a little bit smaller so that um, when I'm doing the pleats on the edge, I can get this straight. Um, I'm not having to pleat through that, but you would do your pleats and everything's still going to be four layers thick. And this is through the middle. Um, so that it's a, an extra bar barrier, but um, isn't as thick and is easier to sew. And some other supplies that you're going to need um, is some sort of cutting mat and a ruler, um, something like this that um, is the self-healing mats are really good. Um, a rotary cutter makes cutting a whole lot easier. Um, a pair of scissors, a good sharp pair of scissors is key. Um, a um, seam ripper, some thread, a bobbin, um, some pins. This is not a necessary step, but this was donated to me by Kroger. Um, and I have plenty if you are local. <laughs> this is more than I would ever use. Um, and it comes in like packs like this. You can probably ask them and they, 
would um, give you one of these, but these are their produce ties. So they're a little bit different than a bread tie, but, and this is not a necessary step, um, but I did see where they were saying the best masks have a wire or something that they can put in the nose to make it bendable around the mask for better protection. And I have been sewing these um, into um, the top of the masks um, before I turn them inside out um, to give them that bendable around the nose piece. Um, so again, not a necessary step, but a nice extra layer of protection. And the last thing that you're going to need is something to use for your earpiece. So I have been using these quarter inch elastic headbands. Um, these, this one right here is the Goodies brand and they were kind enough to donate um, to our cause. Um, I haven't received that shipment yet, but these are some ones that I bought at Walmart. Um, I've had people get them for me at like Dollar Tree and different places um, where you get these headbands. But one headband equals one mask. You're going to cut these into about seven inch long pieces. So I took that headband and I cut them into seven inch long pieces. So two seven inch pieces. This one ended up a little longer, but that's okay. You're going to have about four inches left over. Um, wherever it is glued together, I didn't want that piece. So I did um, make sure that where that glue is that I'm making sure that that's on the throwaway piece. Um, but it does make one headband will make one. Um, there's a few headbands that I got from Dollar or Family Dollar that somebody donated that are a little bit shorter than this. Um, but they're more stretchy, uh, so I just cut them in half. They ended up being just under seven inches long, um, but all the masks that I have made with them um, have been fine. Um, so whatever you have or whatever you are using, um, you can, if you can find it, um, they make just quarter inch elastic um, that you could just on a roll, um, but it's getting harder and harder to come by. So you want them seven inches long though. And then this is just kind of how my setup is. I have my sewing machine set up on my kitchen table um, and there's nothing quite like um, sitting at your table for hours and hours and hours on end to make you realize how badly it needs to be refinished. So <laughs> there's a leftover plastic tablecloth on it. Um, I keep my um, sewing, uh, my self-healing mat pretty close um, so that I have a ruler or while I'm pinning things, I pin things on top of that so I don't poke through and hit my table or anything like that. Um, I always keep my seam ripper and my scissors very handy. Um, this will be kind of your um, favorite tool um, to use during this because in sewing some thick pieces, you may need that to kind of help it through the machine. Um, I've got my pins and my fabric and everything all handy and of course my sewing machine right here. Um, and we will get started. So please forgive me. This is an entirely uh, makeshift setup of my sewing um, and, and how to film it. Um, I don't have like my ring light and stuff like I do at my store. So, uh, but I just want to show you. So first I started off with that um, six inch by 10 inch and we cut it in half. Um, I ironed over the seams um, and then put a quick stitch in there um, just to make that. And that is going to be our pocket piece. Um, then we're going to take um, our very most middle piece, um, which can be anything, but you're not even going to see this piece. So I tend to just use plain fabric for it. Um, it doesn't really matter which side is wrong or which side is right for this. Um, so you're going to start there. And then what I like to do is I take the um, cotton batting and I put it in the middle and I'm just going to run a quick stitch. Um, let me get my thread right a quick stitch along the two short sides but all of my other fabric is pre-washed so we wanted it you want it washed on hot water you want it dried um, so it does all the shrinking that it's basically going to do before you sew so that when it's washed it's not sewn and then it's going to shrink up um, the only thing i didn't pre-wash was this cotton batting so but i'm going to run a quick stitch here And this doesn't have to be perfect. This doesn't have to be, it's, it'll be okay even if it, if it comes undone. I'm just trying to hold it in place. Um, but what I do do is I fold one side. Hold on girls, please. Nope, one minute. Um, so uh, I take that and I kind of shove it over to get a little excess over here. Like I said, I'm not a professional. This is just what I found works for me. So that when we sew it, Oh, I get my string there. Um, it's got a little wiggle room. And I'm just doing that so that um, oh, finger cutting there. So that it's just gonna stay in place and I don't have to worry about it moving while I'm sewing the other pieces. 
so I, there you've got a little excess so that if this shrinks it's not going to crunch the mask up um, then I'm going to flip it over and on this side I hope y'all can see this yeah. so on this side I'm going to take my pocket layers and I'm going to match them up at the end lay them over and then match this one up at the end I like for these to overlap um, I think if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, or at least like to make them butt up. So I am going to come in just a touch from the uh, outside and just make my outside seam just a touch bigger so that I can make these just match up um, like that. And then I'm going to take my very most outer piece. So this is going to be the outside of the mask that everybody's going to see. So you're going to take the, you know, this is the wrong side and this is the right side. So you're going to take the right side of it and face up to your very most back pocket. So this is the right side of the pocket to the right side of the outer fabric. And we're going to lay those down. So you've got three layers, four layers really, uh, here. And what I like to do is I take some pins. Um, you could pin it all around or however you want. Um, I tend to just find where that seam is and I pin a couple of pins. I can come in and then go back down. I hope y'all can hear me over top of my kiss. I do apologize. But you know, it's life right now. Um, I put in like three pins, just stretching over that middle seam. That's gonna hold all the pieces together and hold that middle seam in place. So now it's kind of there and in place. It's not perfect, um, but it'll hold it together while you're putting those stitches in. Okay, so now that we've got it pinned together, we're gonna put our first stitch in along um, the entire top of this front. Um, I like to do some back stitching at the corners and I like to do a couple of back stitches where um, that pocket pieces meet so that we really get that um, well stitched. So I'm just allowing like a quarter inch seam allowance. It's not a big seam. Um, some back stitching. So this is going to be um, the top of the mask, and then this is going to be the bottom, just because I'm probably gonna put the nose piece there. Um, but on this side, we're gonna stitch along, but we're going to stop right after those two pocket pieces meet, and then sew at the corner, so that we have a spot here in the middle to turn the mask um, inside out, or right side out. So, again, lower your foot. Run that right off the fabric, back in. So like I said, we're going to stop right after, we're going to leave a little gap, we're going to take this out, go ahead and cut it off, and then I turn it around this way, put that right along the edge, and watch out for your finger hitting that bar, so make sure you're moving your hand out a little bit, and we're going to sew it along, and I sew just a little bit up, and then I try to hold it straight as I can and back stitch all the way off the fabric. And then just cut all the excess. Throw those pieces away. If you're like me, I just throw them on the floor or if you have a little trash can there. Um, and then I sweep them up every day. Um, so now you're good. These, all these layers are held together by those stitches. Um, so you can pull your pins out. Um, so you've left yourself a little hole to be able to turn it inside out. Um, okay, so now we're ready to sew in the, the elastic for the ear pieces. Um, you want to really make sure that you're putting it under the right layer because um, you've got three layers here that you could possibly put it in. But you want to make sure you're putting it in between the front layer and the very back layer. If you put it on accident where you put the elastic in here, um, you're going to have to uh, rip that seam out and undo it because it's not going to work. Um, so between that first layer and that bottom layer, you're going to take a piece of elastic and you're going to put that in like so right on the edge and then making sure that that's not 
um, twisted in any way, you're gonna butt it up right next to that seam um, on that side. Um, you could pin it in place if you want. Um, I, I always like to sew from whatever the short side, the shortest side is, um, to make sure I'm hitting all the layers of fabric. Um, so I'm going to do a zigzag stripe um, stitch over the elastic just so it's really held in there. Um, over top of that pocket and on that elastic, that's where they're going to have the most tug and pull at. So I just want to make sure my stitching is really tight and well stitched there. So again, I'm going to do where I stitch down and then back stitch over, um, do a zigzag stripe here. I'll switch over to a regular stitch along the middle and then back to a zigzag strip um, going over this elastic piece. Um, you could go all the way through doing a zigzag stripe stitch across there, um, but it's just kind of a waste, or I won't say a waste, but it's just unnecessary um, amount of thread to be used. Um, and also the thicker that this is, the harder it is to me to make pleats. So I just want it as thin as possible while doing what I need to. So I'm gonna put my foot down. I'm gonna switch to a zigzag stripe. Always make sure that your needle is up before you switch um, any kind of stitching so that your needle isn't down in your fabric and the needle moves and you end up breaking your needle. So, um, and then this is where I said that this um, seam ripper is gonna be your best friend because you can take it and lay it flat against here and then butt it up next to the elastic and you can use that to help push it through um, if your machine is having trouble getting through that elastic. Um, and I just use that to help guide it on through so that you don't have any um, hangups or anything. Um, and it's better to, that the needle hit this than it ever hit my finger. <laughs> Back stitch off, and we're gonna go back, pushing it through, and then I like to back stitch over the elastic. Too. All right, so now that my needle's up and we've gone over the elastic a couple times, I'm gonna switch over to just a normal stitch. Make sure we're hitting all three layers of fabric. Um, and then when we get to here, again, I'm gonna switch over to a zigzag stripe. Back stitch, and then stitch right off the edge of the fabric. And then one of my, this keeps happening to me. Um, one of my threads that were on the bottom got caught up. We're just going to use that seam ripper and pull it out where it doesn't need to be and cut off the excess. Okay, so now your, your piece of elastic is in the middle of the thing and that's sealed up. Now that we got this one side sewn with the earpiece in, we need to do the same on the other side. So again, we're gonna make sure that we're between the top part and the middle part, not in between that layer. You need to be in between this layer, so the top and the bottom. Here comes my son with a bag of chips, so you're gonna hear some crunching. Do apologize. This is my life right now. Tying them with potato chips, keep them quiet. I don't know. Just over here. Sit in the chair. If I could get this together. Alright. Okay. Okay. So I get in there. No um, twists. I feel like this side down just a little bit so make sure it's out far enough because you don't want to sew it too far in um, and then it not be as strong of a hold so again put foot pedal down you're going to be on your zigzag stripe and go forward and then back all the way off and then forward again bring that needle up switch over to the regular stitch. And then back to your zigzag st stitch. Right. So there is that side. And then for the last piece before we turn it inside out, we need to put um, the nose piece in. So what I like to do is you're going to put it in the middle of the side that's fully sewn, not the side that's half sewn. Um, and I like to line up the bottom of it with um, right around in there, right on the
the edge or you could do a little bit over if you needed to, um, depending on how wide you left your seam. So we're gonna put that in the middle. And we're gonna come in here. Um, I don't know if all zigzaggy stripe um, stitching, I don't even know what this is called. There's probably a technical name for it, but again, I'm not a professional seamstress, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they're all kind of a uniform size, but if they are and you get these ties from Kroger, this fits exactly over this tie. And I'm about to run out of So hopefully it's enough to get me through this application. Oh, and somebody's trying to. So there we go. So it's just sewn in there to keep it in place. It's not. Um, sewn like real heavily. I did try this with pipe cleaners too at first and I gave up on that application um, because of um, the fuzziness from the pipe cleaner kept on um, ended up coming through my seams. Um, but this has worked perfect. Um, it's not a super, maybe it's not quite as strong as what like you would expect in um, some of the masks like the surgical masks and, and things but um, it works pretty well. Um, so there it is, completely sewn all the way around except for our one spot here. So now we're going to turn it inside out. So again, you want to make sure you're between the top layer and the bottom layer. You can kind of get a hold of one of the ear bands. It can help pull it out all straight. So there we go. So. That's our front side of the mask. And that's our back side where they can slip um, a pocket in. So now um, we need to do um, some top stitching around. Um, how I started with doing it was going ahead and um, top stitching around at this step. Um, if you have an iron handy, this is really gonna be um, nice if you can iron down um, this seam. So you're gonna tuck that in and tuck that in. Um, there's probably a name for this type of stitch again. Um, I don't know. So you're gonna, if you hear some noise in the background, it's just my, my uh, Instapot coming up to pressure. <laughs> Got a roast going. So we're gonna do like that. Ooh, it smells good. I can smell it already. Um, I'm gonna pin that in place. If you have an iron handy and wanna iron that down, it does make for a prettier seam. Um, I just have kids running around and one has already burnt themselves on the iron. So I'm just doing like that. And then sometimes you get like the little pieces of the edges of the fabric that fold through. I just cut those off. Um, so again, like I said, you could go ahead and top stitch around this whole thing at this step. Um, I have been foregoing that in favor of going ahead and putting my pleats in. So you're going to put in three um, equal pleats. Um, and this is the part that you're just, if you're new to pleating, um, as I was <laughs> before this, you're just gonna have to play around with it some. Um, there is, on um, one of the tutorials I watched, like she measured it out and all this and that, and it was great and it was perfect and it worked, um, but I also found that this worked faster for me for to just do a pleat at the end, do a pleat at this end, and then do a pleat in the middle. So they're gonna kind of line up like a wave. So you want them to all tuck into each other. You okay? Yeah? Good boy. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get it in like that and tuck those in and pin those into place. Um, and then we're going to go, you could even pin, do it to where you did them at the same time and pin them in. Um, I haven't been just because I just, for me, I found it easier to just do one side and then come through and do the other side. I hope I have that pot sealed right because I feel like I don't. Good thing the spot has nothing to do with me teaching how to sew. I feel like it's venting and it shouldn't be. So again, the pleat on the outsides and then come in and pleat that middle to make it all even. Over the thread. So I'll just cut that off. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I like to do the zigzag um, 
uh, stitch across the two ends and then switch back to a normal stitch for the outside. So I'm doing all the top stitching and catching the pleats in one step. I just found this a little bit faster, um, whereas I'm trying to make as many masks as I can, uh, but I'm gonna have to switch out my thread on the top, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I switched out my top thread, um, just being on the conservative end, I didn't switch out my bobbin because I think that there's still um, quite a bit left on my bobbin. Um, so I'm gonna have black at the top and like a neutral color at the bottom, but again, these masks, they need them quickly and they need lots of them. So I'm just trying to conserve materials where I can. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pleated in, in first. Uh, again, like I said, I am not a professional. So if I'm doing this wrong, somebody feel free to correct me. However, it's working. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go with a number four, which is my like a zigzag, kind of a looser zigzag. Um, you could do another stitch or you could straight stitch across this too, I think would be just fine. I'm just thinking across those pleats, it gives extra protection. Okay, so I just did something kind of silly and I forgot to put my foot pedal down when I went to sew and it made way too loose of stitching. Um, you really gotta make sure that foot pedal is down. Um, and look, it messed up here too. Like it doesn't hold the tension correctly. So then your whole machine is thrown off and your stitching is thrown off. Um, so just make sure that you've got all that stuff correct before you go all willy nilly sewing like I just did. Um, Cause otherwise you have to sit and rip out all that whole thing. Like I just did, but that's okay. Foot pedal is now down and we're gonna sew as close to the line as possible. Um, as we get to the pins before we hit them, we'll remove them. So I kind of hold it in place. Uh oh. Didn't have enough of my thread out. So I'm gonna re thread. I think I probably didn't have it in place behind the needle either. So I'm gonna pull that back. Make sure we hit this little spot there. And that we got plenty of extra out there so when it pulls up, it's not pulling the thread out of the needle. So again, the battle down. We're gonna start off with a couple of punches. Reverse stitch. Oh, we can get it to move. And then as we get to the pins, we're pulling those out. And I tell you, a seam ripper is a great tool because if you get to where you put that foot on top of it and it doesn't want to come out, a pin head fits just perfect in there and you can help pry it out. And I'm going to kind of hold it in place and get a few stitches in on the corner. Then we're gonna switch over to um, like a tighter top stitching. And remember, wherever you have this metal, this is where my nose piece is, it may be a little more difficult to, for your machine to get through. Okay. Now, just keeping it as close to the edge as possible. in the material down, I'm gonna go ahead and move it around and just rotate the fabric around the needle. But I wanna make sure that I'm pulling that needle up all the way before we switch a stitch because that stitch sent that needle over and you don't want that down in the fabric um, when you switch it over. So same thing, do a couple of stitches before we send it on through, pulling those needles out. See, like right there, I almost hit that needle. I broke a pin doing that the other day and it got stuck down in the mask. So we're gonna get a few stitches going, bring that around, pull that needle up, switch over to a tighter stitch. And we'll pull this pin out that's holding um, the uh, part that we turned inside out is right here. So that was pin was holding that. So we want to make sure we're getting right over to the edge a good stitch to capture that and pull it and sew it closed. So now it's closed. Relax my foot a bit. 
we've got, got underneath in between the two so I'm just I'll just raise it up to get it back straight and then for this I run it all the way over and I just run it off the edge right up by that so you're gonna pull it down a little bit and you're just gonna snip it off and you'll snip off these two ends there there's extra if you see any little threads sticking out you can go ahead and trim those off some really little like sharp scissors would be great for this but I don't have any handy um, so there we go there is a completed mask um, getting them where they have the pocket to put a disposable filter if needed but already even if they don't want to put a filter this is four layers thick with that nose piece that's gonna help hold it together and that should be good and strong like you shouldn't have to worry about whether that those pieces are going to come out we've sewn that a bunch we've given everything a good so this should be washable reusable and hopefully help save some lives all right so i thought i would just put on um, the mask and show you all so like the typical kind of surgical mask you see them they're really usually kind of shaped like that they're usually pretty rectangular um and you've got your little ear pieces so they people will slide them on and then you've got that nose piece in there so now we've got a good fit across there and we have um, a surgical mask ready to protect people and help save lives um, and hopefully we can make as many of these as possible and get them out to our healthcare workers that are on the front lines um, so that they can stay well so that they can keep treating people and we can flatten that curve um, to help as many people as humanly possible so I hope that tutorial was easy to follow. If you have any questions, just um, let me know. Drop them in the comments. Send me a message. You can message me on Facebook or, or any or uh, Instagram. Um, and I hope that this helps you all. Um, if anything I do is not correct and not up to some kind of standard, um, I do want to know about that. But to what articles I have read um, and in doing some research and talking to some people, um, four layers is good. Um, three layers is fine. Four layers is better. Um, a pocket is the best and with the nose piece um, again is kind of the best um, that could fit around and help people um, and make it because I just we just want to make it the best that it can be so again disclaimer again I am not a professional seamstress I just wanted to reach out and try to help some people that are just beginning sewing and want to help make masks um, because we need all the help we can get um, but the most important thing is that they have masks that are properly made um, with good good tight stitching um, that aren't going to fall apart um, because or else the virus can get in through that so that's why i wanted to make this video and thank you all so much uh, everyone that has helped in doing that and thank you to our healthcare workers our ems um anybody everybody that's on the front lines of this our grocers that are still out selling us groceries and we're all hoarding toilet paper um so anybody that is out and having to deal with all of this god bless you god bless america and we're gonna get through this guys love you all bye